No, it's uh, it's fascinating stuff. And I have to say, I'm still kind of reeling from the revelation uh, that um, Michael Cohen stole money from the Trump organization. And that wasn't, at least to my knowledge, that the prosecution didn't right. get that get that out earlier, uh, because it's not as though um, the prosecution is going to be helped by further uh, evidence that Michael Cohen is, is a shady character. Um, I mean, uh, let, let's I'll get to the newest stuff in a second, but... Oh, don't you worry, fake tapper. I'll get to the new stuff. But as you heard right there, um, big, huge bombshell, which I already did a video today, where um, the prosecution's star witness, Alvin Do Nothing Bragg, and Judge Fake Don Juan Mershon have actually allowed this circus show, this charade to continue not only last week being caught in multiple, multiple lies by the uh, exemplary uh, skills of uh, defense, uh, Trump defense attorney Todd Blanche, but then today he literally admitted with a straight face that he stole money from the Trump organization. I did a video on that. If you haven't seen that whole video, and you, it, it, the, the testimony is insane. Go check that out. It's on my YouTube, on my Rumble. I'll leave it on the end screen as well. As if that wasn't enough. In this video, I'm talking about how Michael Cohen literally revealed, and I'm going to share with you point by point the exact testimony verbatim today, where he literally admitted that he would lie to the jury if it affected him personally and if it affected him financially. Wait till you hear this. But before I do, I found this to be extremely interesting. And nobody's talking about this. Nobody in mainstream media has discussed this. President Trump posted on Truth Social. If you don't know, I'm on Truth Social, by the way, if you want to follow me at Professor Des. Um, Truth Social is uh, Donald Trump's uh, very own uh, social media network. He posted on Friday that many people are thinking that Bragg's office wanted to possibly drop all the charges in light of Michael Cohen's testimony, which, you know, a lot of court observers, myself included, have described as, quote, catastrophic for the prosecution. I mean, it was an absolute boop show last week. And it wasn't just me. Further proof how bad this case has been when you've got people like Anderson Cooper, Caitlin Collins, and a ton of other liberal commentators, you know, on CNN, MSNBC, and other networks, basically admitting they would equip President Trump if they were jurors on this case. Literally verbatim. That's what they said. Cohen's testimony has been so damning that even the corporate state media can't deny reality. Here Trump says people are thinking that Soros-backed DA Alvin Bragg, who never wanted to bring the witch hunt against me in the first place, is going to drop this ridiculous case and very unpatriotic case in order to save lots of money and also the self-respect of his once revered office. He would then be able to focus on violent crime, which is running rampant and totally out of control in New York, which is 100% true. The dilemma is and always has been the Trump hating parentheses appointed in 2009 and still acting in parentheses judge Juan Mershon would be confronted with the problem of how he would explain this Trump loss to the radical left dem Democrats to whom he owes so much, bring back justice in America. And in all capital letters, which is kind of quintessential President Trump, he says election interference with three exclamation points. I mean, which again, if you could conjure any sense, any pragmatism from this whole charade, that would be, I mean, even though it's very, very thin, uh, that would be the only semblance of any reasonable reason for this to continue. Remember, this is supposedly their star witness. Michael, I can't tell the truth of it. Slap me in the face. Cohen, he is a convicted perjurer. The guy went to jail. He lied to Congress. He is a serial perjurer. And now he's an admitted thief by stealing money. He never he even admitted to Blanche that he never paid it back. He even shocked the court and the public even more when he said that he would lie to the jury if it affected his personal life. Here is the exchange between Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, and Michael Cohen 
courtesy of live reporter contributor Paul Ingracia, who is inside of the NYC courtroom. Trump defense attorney Blanche says, quote, did you mean it when you said revenge is a dish best served cold? Remember, he said that, end quote, by the way. He said that last week. Revenge on his Mia Culpa podcast, which again, he's not supposed to do. He's not supposed to talk about this case, which is supposed to be fair and impartial towards the defendant, President Donald Trump. Even though if it's even if it's a president, he is uh, entitled to a fair and impartial trial. You're not supposed to talk about this. You're not supposed to broadcast anything. You're not supposed to discuss this with anybody, let alone on a public medium, which contradictory is being gagged. The defendant is actually being gagged. President Trump has a gag order against him. He's already been fined thousands of dollars for posting on social media, but yet nothing wrong about Michael Cohen posting all over TikTok, going live on TikTok, talking about the case, selling merchandise of Trump behind bars, and then saying that on uh, his podcast, saying that revenge is a, is a dish uh, best served cold. The... Double standard is uh, insanity. It's just insanity. So again, did you mean it when you said revenge is a dish uh, best served cold? Cohen says, yes, sir. Todd Blanche, you were willing to lie under oath if it affects your personal life, correct? Cohen, I don't understand your question. I beg your pardon? Am I am I nuts, Nez Nation? Let me know in the comments. Is this a hard question to understand? I repeat, Blanche, you were willing to lie under oath if it affects your personal life, correct? What's so hard to understand about that? Pretty straightforward. Are you a lying ass dog or not? Again, Cohen says, I don't understand your question. Blanche, you testified under oath months ago that you were willing to lie if it affects your personal life, correct? Cohen, yes, sir. Blanche, so I'm asking the same question to you now. Would you still be willing to lie if it affects your personal life? Bragg prosecutor, objection. Mershon, objection sustained. Huh? Why? First of all, I don't understand. Why was the question before you testified under oath that you're willing to lie affects your personal life? Cohen says, yes, sir. So I'm asking you the same question to you now. It's the same question. Why was that being objected? And then even more nuts and bonkers, why would the fake Don Juan Mershon sustain the objection? If that's not a blatant display of favoritism, if that's not a blatant display that this judge is totally cooked, crooked, and bought by the woke mind uh, mafia, what else is? How could you sustain that objection? Are you uh, Explain that to me. Let me know in the comments. It makes zero sense to me. Zero. And I consider myself to be pretty intelligent. So then Blanche, you know, reorientates his question. Blanche. Would you be willing to lie if it affects you personally? Cohen, yes, sir. Then, as Blanche probes even deeper, Michael Cohen admitted he has a financial interest in the outcome of this sham trial by Alvin Do Nothing Bragg. Blanche says, do you have a financial interest in the outcome of this case? Cohen, yes, sir. Even in an even more, I mean, I'm almost speechless. And I'm a dude who's very rarely speechless. You guys know this. Michael Cohen admitted to the court that he is considering a run for Congress and pitching a reality show to networks called The Fixer. I mean, you guys, you might as well have the carnival barker. You might as well have the bearded lady. You might as well have the uh, three ring circus, the clown car. I mean, that's the only thing that's missing from this clown circus show. This guy wants to run for Congress and he's pitching. I mean, his whole entire, remember, Trump's, uh, uh, Michael Cohen's attorney, Robert Costello said, this is the only way that Cohen can make money 
It's all his whole life is obsessed with Trump. His whole life is directly connected. It is like an umbilical cord relationship. His financial ties, mental, physical, everything is tied to what happens to Trump. He is overly obsessed, iconically obsessed with Trump. Blanche says, Blanche asks, how long have you been working with your colleague to pitch your proposed reality show, The Fixer? Nice title. Cohen, about three months. Blanche, and you're working on a third book? Cohen, correct. Blanche, are you also considering a run for Congress? Cohen, correct. Blanche, you have said that you would make a great candidate for Congress because of your name recognition. Cohen, that's correct. Blanche, and your name recognition is based primarily on your attacks on President Trump. Cohen, my name recognition is based on my life journey. Nobody would know who you are, you stupid lunkhead, if it wasn't for Trump. What a momo. Blanche, and a large part of your life journey includes daily attacks on President Trump, correct? Cohen, sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Of course it is. I mean, what kind of a bonehead, lunkhead, knucklehead? Oh, somebody needs to just smack Cohen upside the head. Where's your mother, Cohen? She needs to slap you upside the head. Blanche, the answer is yes or no. You have dedicated a significant part of your podcasts, books, and more to attacking President Trump daily. Correct? Cohen. Correct. Blanche. So that would compromise a large part of your life journey, correct? Cohen. Correct. What a major embarrassment for New York. What a major embarrassment for the New York criminal justice system. What an astounding embarrassment for the district attorney, Alvin Do Nothing Bragg, Governor Hochul. Uh, even the mayor, Eric Adams, uh, Judge Don Juan Mershon. I mean, I, I think the, the biggest embarrassment besides the woke mind mafia, the Obama, Clinton, Oprah consortium, the biggest embarrassment is America because the world is watching this and the world is most certainly laughing at this. And there's been plenty of evidence that they're laughing at this. Uh, you saw all sorts of... Um, uh, sketches that made fun of Biden constantly falling and losing his uh, bearing, you know, in, in Europe and Italy. Uh, you, you see these brazen attacks by Iran uh, attacking Israel. We don't think that I don't think that would ever happen under any other president besides Tombstone, Vegetable in Chief. We basically have got World War Three happening right now with proxy wars. All military experts and, and com combat generals are essentially saying that Russia, the the win in, uh, by Russia in the battle uh, uh, in Ukraine is is inevitable. All of our taxpayer dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars, gone to waste. We've got a border that's out of control. We got crime that is out of control. Inflation out of control. Economic catastrophe after economic catastrophe. People can't buy groceries. People can't buy gas. People can't take a holiday. People can't take vacation. People can't afford bare necessities. And instead of doing something about that, instead of actually issuing an executive order and closing the border and actually solving problems that are facing everyday, real, hardworking Americans, what do we have that's happening? We've got the most unbelievable circus masquerade happening. A political witch hunt, a politicized DOJ, Department of Justice, going after a political opponent, which is reflective of a third world banana republic. That's the biggest tragedy here. Besides the tragedy that's happening to the former president, besides the tragedy that's happening to American people, the biggest tragedy is the actual credibility, the actual ethos of America itself. As Kevin O'Leary once said, the brand of America is plummeting. That's the biggest sadness. I want to throw this off to you, Nez Nation. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. What do you think of this latest admission from the star witness, Michael, I can't tell the truth if it slapped me in the face, Cohen? 
What do you think of what the this, uh, bombshell testimony that just came out today? I want to hear from you. Let me know. As always, it's impossible for me. I try really hard to respond to all the comments. So it would behoove you to become a member. It only costs you a cup of coffee to support our channel. And you get all sorts of perks, all sorts of benefits. You get ask access to our members-only Discord. I'll leave links in the comments, description, and show notes below. Also, subscribe to our free newsletter. It's free, so you don't ever miss out. It's your fail-safe way of never missing out on the latest breaking that mainstream media won't cover. Make sure that's in the pinned comment as well and in the description and show notes. Check out these videos coming up on the screen right now. And as always, God bless you, and may God bless America. I'll see you soon.